secrets of the shadowed heart. The night was alive with leaping, dancing flames, their red tongues twining around bundles of oil-drenched sticks like ardent lovers seeking to share their passions. Silent figures stood around the fires, staring into their blazing hearts. Garion knew what came next, but he could do nothing to stop it. Not here, and not now. The pontiff mounted the platform, a crimson figure glowing like a cinder stolen straight from hell. He raised his hands and all eyes turned toward him. Those gathered round the fires raised their fists and clapped them over their hearts in salute. The pontiff returned their salutes and put his hands into the sleeves of his robe. He turned and nodded into the shadows at the base of the huge gallows. A low groan of expectation went through all of the watchers below. It was a sound of raw hunger, filled with a need that could not be spoken aloud in the light of day. A girl was led up the steps and made to stand next to the pontiff. She was young and dressed in little more than a ragged sack. She seemed barely more than a child. Her eyes were red from crying and her feet were stained with dirt and blood, but there was a defiance in her gaze an anger that speared through Garion like a lance made of ice as she looked at him. Her eyes were a sharp, slate gray that he could see clearly, even from so far away. A line was forming behind the girl now. There were mothers and fathers, old men, young boys, and more. They were bruised and bloody, exhausted and broken, all of them weeping as they were forced to walk forward. The line of them stretched out into the darkness like ghosts, far past where Garion should have been able to see them. The girl stepped forward, and for just a moment, Garion felt his heart surge. Then the pontiff pushed her, and she fell into the fire. She was only the first. The others came, first in a trickle, then in a flood. They leaped from the platform and into the burning maw below, screaming as they fled the whips and the blades of the men at their backs. The crowd surged, their cries for blood rising to a fever pitch until it was no longer a human sound. They bayed like beasts at the smoke-shrouded moon, hungry for more. Garion screamed with them, but his voice was the only one filled with terror and horror at what he was witnessing. Still, the bodies fell and fell and fell, hitting the ground with flat thuds like a fist hammering on the inside of a coffin. Servano, a voice said in between the knocking on his chamber door. Are you well? Garion's eyes shot open. He was drenched in cold sweat, and his hand was around the hilt of the dagger he kept beneath his pillow. The phantom smell of charred flesh and burned hair lingered in his nose, but he shook his head as he stood. He padded to the door, lifted the bar, and opened it a crack, peering out into the candlelit dimness. Daxos, Gary managed through sleep-numb lips, clearing his throat. Is all well? Out here, yes, the young man said, swallowing hard as he lifted his candle a little more. But is all well in there? I heard thrashing and you were shouting. Gary and arms sweat from his forehead and put on the best smile he could manage. He felt sickly, but hoped that in the dim light Daxos wouldn't be able to tell. It's nothing, Daxos. I was having a nightmare, nothing more. If you're certain... Servano, Daxos said. I am, Garion said. My apologies for waking you. I hope I didn't say anything to alarm you. For a moment, a shadow passed over Daxos' face. Then the young man smiled, and it was gone. No, sir. Rest well, and may the haunts leave you in peace. 
And you as well, Garin said, closing the door gently. He slid the bar back into place and stood motionless as he strained his ears. Daxos stood in the hall for a long moment, then padded away. Garion waited until he'd heard the door down the hall close before he let out the breath he hadn't been aware he was holding. Garion pushed back his sweat-dampened sleeve and made himself look at his skin. The brand was still there, puckered on the inside of his forearm. It was faded now, the edges rough and blotchy with time. Garion flexed his fist, squeezing until his knuckles went white and the cords of muscle stood out like carved stone. The brand was the one they'd all willingly accepted when they joined the Pontiff's army. They'd put it there so that when they saluted, that symbol was right above their hearts. They felt it every day when they clasped arms with their kin, so that it would remind them they were brothers and sisters in his cause. The Pontiff had made great speeches about purity. He had spoken of bloodlines, of community, and protecting the land that was theirs by right of strength and sacrifice. They had followed him, and they had committed atrocities at his whim. Garion Redhand, the Butcher of Black Hill, had died in that conflagration that had ended the so-called Society of the Blood. From the ashes of that night, Renault Varys had risen, the hero of Bell's Ford, the Demon Slayer, the Righteous Blade, and a dozen other names had been heaped upon him over the years, but underneath them all, Garion knew who he was. He would never let himself forget who he had been, and what he had been part of. He pulled his sleeve back down over the old brand and closed his eyes. It had been long years since then, but Garion knew his old name hadn't been forgotten by everyone. The legend of that monster in a red headsman's hood lived on, and part of him knew the evil he had done might exist far longer than the echoes of any noble deeds he did now. And all it would take was the wrong person recognizing that scar, or worse, hearing him cry out a confession in his sleep for him and his secret to be dragged back into the light of day. Thank you for joining me for yet another dark little drama. This story comes from the tabletop RPG supplement 100 Dark Secrets, and acts as the framing device for players and game masters to really get to grips with the options provided. If you enjoyed this story, and you'd like to help us keep making videos like this, then please consider giving us a like, sharing it around, and subscribing to the channel. It really does go a long way toward helping us keep the lights on, and the stories spinning.